Okay, we are gonna we're gonna have an introduction to progressivism and progressives as we look at it through the lens of, of at least one minority group during this um, video presentation. Uh, we are combining Wednesday and Thursdays uh, videos from the calendar. Uh, we obviously didn't have one last night. Um, what you'll want to have out for this video is the chapter 17 section 1 notes and then the second side are the section 2 and section 3 and also definitely have out your vocab sheets um, as I'll be going over a number of the vocab words as I'm going through this video presentation um, and let's actually just start with that um, the images that you're looking at here really draw a stark contrast between the haves and the have-nots or as we've been looking at the economic models in class that top wealthy and the bottom the people. What you have on the left is a, a row of mansions on Fifth Avenue in New York and what you have on the right is a basically a one-room apartment um, oftentimes without any outside facing windows where an entire family sometimes more than one family would have to live because of their ability to afford you know um, a place to live. So if we look at this, this is this is a, a classic dumbbell, and it's you know shaped like a dumbbell, dumbbell tenement floor plan, and a tenement. Right, so here's your vocab word. Right, a tenement is a dwelling in which a family or many families would have to live during the late 19th and early 20th century with you know poor living conditions, poor ventilation, oftentimes the only bathroom was for the entire building and it was outside. And if you look at the floor plan, you have, you know, a small bedroom, a small kitchen, and a small living room. And, you know, if you were talking about a family of maybe three, they might be able to make that work. But oftentimes you had families up to five to seven people, sometimes more than one family living in these tenements. And the tenements were um, a, a good target and a good revelation for a lot of people who are going to become progressives. And if you scroll, or if you go back to, I'm sorry, the first side, Let's go ahead and just define progressive, and that will take us into our, our goal for today. <clears throat> Progressives, or a progressive, is going to be a person who is either trying to gain power or has access to power and is motivated to use that power to help others and to help change society for the better. Now, we talked earlier in the week about their motivation, the difference between altruism and a do-gooder. We're not going to talk about motivation when we talk about progressives. We're just going to say they were progressive. They may be doing it for different reasons, but in the end, a progressive is somebody who is working on enacting that kind of change. And so what we're going to do the first part of this video is we're going to assess the goals of the progressives. You know, their desire to remove corruption and undue influence from government through the taming of bosses and political machines. They had their effort to include more people directly in the political process, and that'll get us to a couple of our vocab words, and the conviction that government must play a role to solve social problems and establish fairness in economic matters. And that speaks specifically to the tax and spend model of economics that we looked at in class today. When we come into class tomorrow, one of the first things we're going to do is we're going to think about and talk about reform. And so if you look up a little bit further on the first side of your um, the first set of your uh, vocab sheet, reform is on there, it's under spoil system. And when you, when you ask what is reform, reform is taking something that exists in society and is viewed negatively or is viewed as a problem for society and enacting change to make it better or to empower a group or to empower those people. So. You know, if you think about, you know, women not having a place in the voting population, a reform movement would be focused on getting them the right to vote. Um, if you look at people who are struggling to make ends meet, there could be a reform movement to try to get them social help. And so what we're going to look at in class tomorrow, we'll talk about this at the very beginning of class, is just this idea. Is all reform positive? Or is, is, is it possible that some reform can go too far and actually be negative? And so we'll take a look at this list in class tomorrow. But what I want to what I want to focus on for a second here is the idea of a grassroots movement. And this is something that maybe you would add to your list in one of the spots down at the bottom. Right, a, gra a, a grassroots movement is a a movement sparked by average people. 
So it's change, reform, that is being motivated by people it would most, most easily impact or people who aren't already in power. So it's not like the government starting it, it's the government reacting to it. The progressive movement has its, its foundation in grassroots. And so if you look at where you had progressive on your vocab list, if you go one down, right, I'd like to define for you muckrakers because muckrakers are very significant to the progressive movement. The populists, you know, they tried something, but they don't necessarily succeed because they don't get, get enough traction. But the muckrakers are going to be successful. And muckrakers are journalists who focus their attention and efforts on exposing the problems that they see in society. So they write stories, they write books, they take, image, they take pictures and publish their pictures of the problems that they see in society so that more people can be made aware of the problems. So tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to take a pretty close look at muckraking and specifically um, Jacob Reese as, I'm sorry, not Jacob Reese, Upton Sinclair as a muckraker. And so the, the, terms that we, the terms that we've looked at so far are reform, progressive, and muckraker. And then on the back, tenement. Things that we will look at in class tomorrow will be um, direct primary, initiative, referendum, recall, suffrage, and also um, we'll talk a little bit more about um, cross of gold. But I want to change gears just a little bit and move on to a secondary goal that I have for today. And this is also going to take us through some of the other words on the back of this vocab list. And I would suggest that at this point, any notes that you were taking on the video so far on the section one side, flip over and maybe take these notes on the section two slash three side. Um, so, so we have a, a, a secondary aspect or a secondary component of progressivism, which is going to focus specifically on minorities. And what I asked you to focus on in your reading was both women and African Americans. And for this video, we're going to focus in on African Americans. A fact is that at the turn of the century, 9 out of 10 African Americans still lived in the South. And when, while they lived in the South, they were being exposed to or they were being treated as second class citizens. And so if you look at the, the, the vocabulary list, there's a vocabulary, vocabulary word on your list called, sec, it's called segregation. And what I'm asking you in terms of our goal here is, was segregation a constitutional means of protecting two races from one another? That is, did the idea of segregation help African Americans? And so to define segregation, segregation is a systematic policy. So it's a part of the, um, the government's policies. It's part of the, the government way of working. That's systematic. And I think systematic may actually be on your list. Let me double check. Yes, systematic. So systematic means that it is it is a it is a an accepted practice. It is a part of the inner workings of something, and in this case, our our government. Segregation was a systematic policy of separate of keeping the two ra races separate. And in the South, there were many what they started out as black codes, and they evolved into Jim Crow laws, which are intentionally passed to keep the races away from one another. And what we're figuring out and what we're trying to figure out is are those or were those laws intended to be racist in nature or were they trying to protect the races from one another? So some terms that you need to know and some of them are on your list and we'll go over the ones that are. Let's start with lynching. A lynching is a, a, a pseudo legal process that was practiced often in the South where a black man or woman would be accused of some kind of crime, and the word crime is, is really loosely used here. They would be tried in a, in a courtroom that didn't exist. It was a public, um, a public court process where a group of people would accuse a black man of something and they would punish him as they saw fit. It could be something as simple as, you know, burning a cross in front of their house, or it could go as far as beating them or oftentimes it went as far as actually murdering them, hanging them from a tree. And that's a, that's a lynching. What I want to get into today 
where I, where I want to go today is just to look at one, sorry, one case, and it's on your list as Plessy versus Ferguson. And Plessy versus Ferguson is a landmark Supreme Court case decided in 1896. And the gist of it is, and you get this in your vocab, and then and we'll pick up with this in class tomorrow. But Plessy versus Ferguson made a decision that hey, this man right here on your screen got onto a train and told the conductor that he was a black man, that he had some black blood in his um, lineage. Well, there was a law that said that all black people had to be on a specific train car. And so he was made to go to that train car. Well, he sued the company, he sued the railroad for violating his civil rights and he took it all the way to the United States Supreme Court, the case of Plessy versus Ferguson. And they were challenging the legality of laws that kept the races separate. The Supreme Court decided in 1896 that separate but equal was okay under the Constitution. That the South could continue to pass laws that kept the races separate so long as the facilities were of equal quality. They went on to also say that if you had one drop of black blood, of African American blood, that you were considered under the eyes of the law to be black. So what Plessy v. Ferguson did is it legalized, it validated the South's process of segregation. And so we're going to have a couple of extensions of progressivism that we're going to look at closely in class in tomorrow night's video. We're going to look at progressives who were attacking kind of mainstream problems, the plight of the poor, the, the, the plight of business, the in, inaccurate, or I'm sorry, inequality in distribution of wealth. And then we're also going to look at some, some specific progressive actions, those targeted at ensuring the rights of women and those targeted at ensuring the rights of African Americans. We will pick up with this in class tomorrow. If you have any questions, be sure that you're bringing this vocab sheet in so that we can fill in any gaps that maybe you have. That is it.